Good morning, friends. I hope your day's starting well. We only have a few short days left in our Advent journey to Christmas, and so I'm excited to continue that journey with you. And Sausage is, of course, feeling rather cuddly this morning, and he's here with me, with us, as we gather, spending some time. He kept uh, sitting on the Bible, so we had to, of course, move him off the Bible. So, uh, Today we're going to look at two texts that are connected, one in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament, very quickly, just as we get this bigger picture of the coming of Christ and the meaning behind it. Um, we'll move from this through the rest of the week into looking at the actual Christmas story. So the first text is Isaiah chapter 9, which we haven't read yet. And Isaiah chapter 9 is a fantastic prediction of the coming of Christ and what it means for us. So you can turn there and follow along or just read with me. Are you going to be okay with this? Yeah, I guess I have to keep betting him with one hand. Um, so Isaiah chapter 9, let's go to verse 2 to begin. Where is that? That's 2. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with a joy at the harvest as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his for his shoulder, the rod of oppression... It is a, uh, I'm going to read that whole chapter again. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. Here the prophet Isaiah looks forward to the coming of Christ, and he likens the world before Christ as to a dark, dark, before sunlight, night. And then, of course, sunlight comes and bursts through, and there is dawn. Now, that's an important image because John, the, the author of the book of John, uses the same language to describe the coming of Christ. And not only that, to describe the character and the person of Christ as well. So he picks up on what Isaiah is doing there, and he invites us to see it more fully in Christ's ministry. Let's take a look at this. And in Christ's birth, I'm going to read from John chapter 1. Um, and I'm going to read uh, to... I'll read this whole passage, it's beautiful. In the beginning was the Word... John the Apostle says. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of will of flesh, nor will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because He was before me. And from His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. So, Old Testament, New Testament, it's the same image, a world darkened. 
and Christ enters this world as a baby. The language here of became flesh and dwelt among us is that word dwelt is tabernacle. He put in put up his tent in our midst is the image that we have here. And this is the image of the only begotten Son of God who is God dwelling in all eternity, creating the universe, and he entering into a world that was his. It's a profound and beautiful image. And there's two sides to it. So I love the way John the John the author of John John the author of the book of John. This is confusing because John the author of the book of John uh, um, says that the uh, that Jesus Christ brought grace and truth into the world. That's his character. That's his hope. The hope that we have in him, and that's what sets him apart, isn't it, sausage? That's what sets us apart as well as that we are children of grace and truth. Now that being said. John the Baptist, who we've read so much about, and about his parents, and about his birth, his role was to declare the coming of Christ. And as it says in John, 1 John as well, this is not, the book of John was not written by John the Baptist. The book of John was written by John the Apostle. John the Baptist is spoken of in the book of John, and in the other Gospels as well. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. So John, his cousin, came to bear witness to the coming of Christ. And so as we gather for Christmas, remember that the same spirit that dwells in John the Baptist dwells in us. And it is with the spirit of the living God in us that we declare to a world that is darkened still by sin that the light has come that the glory of the Lord has shone upon us, and the, the peace of the Lord is present and ever-growing. I love in the book of Isaiah the very practical way that it describes the presence of God in our midst, this light out of darkness that calls people to peace where all the clothing of battle is burned. Um, it's a wonderful image of the peace that comes with Christ and the peace that is coming with Christ for all the nations. So today, as we draw near to Christmas, um, these are things that we can celebrate. Things that have both happened and are happening as His presence and His light grows in us. Let's pray. Father, we praise You for who You are and for what You have done and what You continue to do. We praise you for your spirit who dwells within us, giving us wisdom and understanding that enlightened the eyes of Isaiah the prophet, that enlightened John the Baptist, and that spoke through Jesus, the living Son of God, who came and dwelt in our midst. We thank you most of all for him who came and died on our behalf, who was born in a dark manger in Bethlehem, in a cave perhaps, and he came into those lowly, that lowly position to show the world the love that will free us and will draw us near to God and give us peace with God. I pray, Father, that there's anyone watching this video that needs to find peace with God, that today they would pause and come to you confessing their sins, leaning into the grace that's in Christ, and finding the freedom that he promises, forgiveness of sin, and a spirit who indwells us to give us new life. We pray, Father, for those that are hurting and mourning, for those who the Christmas season is not good news or it's broken news, as there's lots of memories that are hard and lots of wounds that are deep. Father, we pray for your hand of healing and mercy, and we pray that the joy of the Lord would be their hope. They know, Father, that Jesus wept. We know, Lord that your plan for us is a plan that is wonderful, but it's your plan and it's not our plan. Let us lean into you, trusting you when we are fearful, when we are anxious, when we are broken, and uh, when we are hurting. We thank you for your never-ending love for us, your children. And we thank you for the way you have continued to care for us, showing us your mercy and your love. Go before us this holiday week as we look to the Son who died for our sins. Amen. Well, Sausage says goodbye, too. Don't you? You do. He says goodbye. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the stuff. That's the stuff. Yeah, you sit at me while I'm filming. You get stuck in the video, too. Yeah. 
You think he's a little bit too shaggy? Should we trim him down? What do you think? That's the stuff. Say goodbye? Yeah. Goodbye. God bless you all.